Hello, hello everyone. I hope you guys are having an awesome day or night, whatever is going on with you. I am Katie Brannan. This is Tea Time True Crime with Katie. Today though I don't have tea, I have coffee. And I got this really cute little mug yesterday going out with my friend. And it says Good Witch, you know? So I love the Good Witch, you know, like from Wicked Glinda, the Good Witch. All right, that is your positivity for the big, you know, for the video, for the beginning of the video, because this video is, um, I've seen a lot about it, but I just want to share with you guys my conclusion, okay? So please do not come after me, and if you guys are watching, say hello to my witchy witch. Um, she is so cute, a plushie. I added more crystals for more positive energy. Uh, you don't see it, but I have candles all lit up right now because we are, you probably can't see it, but it's literally right behind me. And don't worry, if you're listening, I just have candles behind me and crystals for all the good vibes because we are talking about a true crime case. And this case is solved, but nonetheless, I feel like this Playboy hopeful needed and deserved way, way, way more than what happened to her. So, um, warning, this podcast has adult situations. You may be triggered. I am talking about a little bit of domestic violence, but I am also going to be talking about maybe corruption we do not know in the TV industry. It wouldn't be the first time, right you guys? I am wearing this really cute uh, dress, even though it looks like I'm, I'm naked right now, but I'm, I'm not. Just my hair is covering the um, strings. Just wanted to let you guys know. So it's not that type of podcast. So the beautiful Playboy hopeful, her name was Jasmine Fior. Now, they explain her stage name as Fiore or Fior. So, yes, it can go either or. I'm not entirely sure, but Jasmine was born Jasmine Lepore February 8th, which makes her an Aquarius. And she was a Playboy hopeful, as I say, because she did work for Playboy. She actually was like a Tropicana girl. She worked really, really hard, and she also worked for the golf course club, because Playboy, I didn't realize, ran golf courses. And this is like kind of early 2000s, where like Playboy was like ruling the world, okay? Um, you know, with the girls next door, with all the um, memorabilia of Playboy. In fact, I actually have a Playboy phone cover that I love. It shows all the retro covers. Because me, I feel Playboy is and was very empower empowering for women, you know? Because it actually was like a stepping stone to what their dreams would be. Like whether you were a singer, an actress, a musician, it does not it does not matter playboy would would have been an amazing step for you okay now in my older years uh it was not like that it actually was exploitation of women and just some dark dark matter so as i said jasmine was um a beautiful beautiful girl and not just beautiful outside she was beautiful like inside and out i was reading reports about her like right down from the garbage man and she was nothing but genuine and kind uh, people said she had that look that you know RBF look she had um kind of remind me of Taylor Swift a little bit I didn't see it but I showed my friend the her pictures and she was like wow she kind of resembles an off kilter of Taylor Swift and I was like oh my gosh now I can't unsee it so yeah she had long hair i believe she was like five six you know she was small like 120 pounds and she had um breast aug augmentation so she had the playboy bunny look okay 
and she worked really hard. She actually was in like uh, men's magazines, I believe, like Stuff, Mac, uh, Maxim. Um, when she was younger though, she, my gosh, it was so cute. When I was reading about her, as young as three years old, you guys, she would make plans for the day. Yeah. Her mother said um, every day she'd be like, okay, mom, we're doing this today. Uh, there always was a schedule. There always was planning. Jasmine was just like this bubbly, beautiful flame. You know what I'm saying? She just had this charisma about her and it brought her very far and it definitely could have brought her farther if she's never if she never met Ryan Jenkins. So Ryan Jenkins, he was born February 18th. So now how this guy got into the picture was because of reality series called um, Megan Wants a Millionaire. And I believe he actually won after that show was aired, he won I Love Money. Even though it was never aired on television, I'm going to tell you why in a moment, folks. Um, but he won. So he was going to win the $250,000, but um, he was a psycho, so no, like total psycho. He grew up in like this very rich family from Canada, and he always dreamed to be incredibly wealthy, you know, and he went on the show to actually win, you know, the, um, the affections with Megan. Megan was kind of like an ex-Playboy bunny, okay? And she actually fell in love with Ryan on the show, yeah. He was the kind of guy, um, like his name on the show was Smooth Operator, mm-hmm. And it was the time in early 2000s where like, like uh, 2009 to 2008, you know, stuff like that, where like dating reality shows was huge and I was trying to figure out why and I'm not gonna hate because I've watched those shows let me know down in the comments below if you watch those shows as well okay so if you watch those shows um, they're very addicting they're very like just funny drama a good escape from like what you're going through in life and I feel like that's why it was very popular but it came, you guys, during the writer strike. That was kind of like the birth of reality dating shows. And that's why it just like went everywhere. Makes sense though, right? So Ryan, um, he actually had a record in Canada for assault with an ex-girlfriend. But according to producers, the, they did not see the record and may have been expunged who knows um but they should have never had this guy on the show that's yeah he was like a narcissist like the ultimate kind of narcissist he was the kind of guy that was very arrogant and would just like brag all the time about having money and being confident and everything but in real truth he was not a millionaire it was his family that was a millionaire, okay? So, and he did not have confidence. He was actually very, very insecure. Even though people perceived him as a male model, he never really thought that way about himself. I know it's weird, because he comes off so freaking cocky, but for someone to do this to another human being, you ain't cocky, bro. You have no self-esteem, like, legit. So, all I want to say about Ryan, um, because he is just human garbage, um, is that he went on this reality show, Megan Wants a Millionaire, and that was Megan Hauserman. It is sad um, what happened to her, because she fell in love with him for real during the show, and she was telling the producers, hey, this is, this is who I want to be with, and it was down to the last three. And the producers were like, no, um, he is not a crowd favorite. So you, we, we, we don't see him winning the show. And she was very upset because they were talking actually outside. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
sorry about that um she was talking outside of the show so she was falling for ryan and ryan was falling for her now she could not get to him in time she was trying to wait till after what happened happened to talk to him but it was just like too late okay so she figured out she was heartbroken that she could not be with Ryan because with reality TV stars I thought honestly you pick who you want if you're falling for someone that's who you pick but according to the producers it wasn't making enough ratings you know he wasn't a crowd favorite so she was like devastated and she did not get to tell Ryan that he was cut that he was eliminated from the show and man you guys when that happened whoo it was insane okay so Ryan is eliminated from the show the the dating show okay so he is eliminated after that happens he is so distraught he is so devastated that a few days later by the time Megan talks to him and tries to tell him what's going on and saying all the feelings and everything he goes well hello Megan I'd like you to meet my wife and she's like what mm-hmm so Ryan went to Vegas where Jasmine was working I believe as a Tropicana girl and you know she is perceived as this gold digger playboy airhead shallow and I'm I'm trying to set the record straight here I really want to do her story because she was not that way at all this girl was a baddie okay like in this generation they're like bomb ass bitch baddie that was that was Jasmine she worked her butt off she had her own penthouse she had her own white Mercedes like she made her money and she worked very hard she worked for Playboy her ultimate goal I was trying to figure it out is pretty awesome she really wanted to be a mother and she really wanted to be a wife and her ultimate goal was to one day maybe build a gym because she was really big into health and fitness so yes yeah, this girl had dreams so I don't know why she did what she did but I'm an astrological person as well so I do see a lot of signs and when she met Ryan in Vegas they exchanged phone numbers and they saw that their birthdays were just days apart so they thought to each other it was a sign and he was the one and she was the one so they got married after two days of knowing each other yeah I mean hey man it's your life like it's your yeah two days so um what happened was that she found out that Ryan wasn't really a millionaire and even though Megan didn't care on the show because she was falling for him Jasmine did because Jasmine worked really hard for her money and he would say that oh yeah I have all this money but it's tied up in Canada so she was evidently supporting the relationship using her own hard-earned money and it, it was just fight after fight and she would talk to ex-boyfriends and like I said she was just a very bubbly person who is very outgoing sociable and Ryan was not her match because he was insecure he was possessive he was controlling and he put on a brave face for the cameras always and Jasmine is a very strong woman and I think honestly that she did not get help because she didn't think it was gonna be or like turn out that bad I mean nobody does but they were together I mean for months not long at all and she actually tried to get the marriage annulled because Ryan was not who he said he was at all and she wanted to get away from that so she was trying to get away from him and everything and Megan was like kind of she was very upset that Ryan just went to Jasmine and according to friends and even Megan that you know they were fighting and they didn't really like each other she didn't like him he didn't like her I mean it's already a recipe for disaster okay so 
Jasmine just, I mean, wanted to live her life. And I think she really wanted to be a mother and a wife and, and all these good things. And, and like the lifestyle that Playboy had to offer. And her goal was to become a centerfold. And I think she really could have become a centerfold. I really do. But tragically, she never got that chance. When she was 28 years old, there was a domestic violence uh, dispute that ended her life. But before that, months before, they were at some kind of um, party, like a swimming pool, and she was talking to someone, and Ryan was so mad out of anger, he pushed her arm and then pushed her right into the pool. So when that happened, you know, Jasmine pressed charges, and she was just like, uh, you know, like, fuck that, like, no. And yeah, so he actually had, you know, charges pressed on him. She, like I said, had friends and everything, and she still talked to her exes, because she's, you know, only in her 20s, so she's living her life. And, you know, when you marry a man that thinks he's so cocky and so secure and, like, all this talk, he actually wasn't. He was extremely possessive, and I really think she was scared. At one point, she actually dyed her hair black because she was blonde for a long time. But she dyed herself, like, not, not, not black, but it was like a brunette color. She still looked beautiful, but she wanted to, like, change her alien. I think she just wanted to get a new life and just, like, get rid of him. And I feel like when he felt that she did not, like, need him or want him, it was over. So he got her to actually come back and hang out at a poker tour tournament in a hotel. And the investigators don't know 100% when he ended her life. Um, it could have been in the vehicle, which she bought, the, the white Mercedes, or it could have been at the hotel. But the abuse definitely started in the car. So they think when she was texting an ex um, boyfriend that, you know, texting an ex-boyfriend that um, this is how it all went down. So before they went to the poker tur tournament, Ryan completed I Love Money and he won the $250,000. Even though it was never aired, that's what they're saying. And even in the show, they actually joked about how Ryan was obsessed with his model wife. And that wasn't funny because he really was obsessed. And he's in Mexico filming the show and she's still in Vegas. So, yeah. And he's just like, where are you and everything like that. So, um, yeah, total, total creep, total liar, total manipulator. And he should have never been on that show, okay? He should have never been on that show. So... On August 14th, 2009, um, there was a fight against Jasmine and Ryan. And he apparently flew into a rage when she was texting her ex. And he hit her. And he hit her hard. And because when the vehicle was found, there was um, fingerprints of blood. And there was... A blood spatter on the back of the vehicle which means I'm guessing when he hit her you know he broke her nose or something that there was definitely um, blood spatter now he there is security footage of them going to the hotel but she kind of looks kind of like out of it it's very odd um, so after that happens he, um, Hours later, Ryan leaves the hotel by himself, without Jasmine. And what's scary is that when he popped her in the face, like he hurt her, like he assaulted her, and he knew, like, she was going to press charges again, he knew he had to kill her. So this poor girl... She was like beaten and then strangled and then dismembered in the hotel. He actually smashed her teeth. He pulled out her teeth and he cut off her fingertips. 
and shoved her little body in a suitcase and then dr drove down an area where he just threw this suitcase in a huge dumpster. And you're probably thinking, well, Katie, if he got rid of her teeth and if he got rid of her fingertips, well, then how the hell did they identify her? Well, how they identified her was her hard-earned money, okay? Her breast implants had serial numbers on them. Yep. So when they were trying to autop, you know, do an autopsy on the body, they found she had breast implants. And when you have breast implants, they have ser serial numbers. And of course, that went right to the patient, Jasmine Fior. I know, right? Man. And the case gets stranger. So, after her body was discovered, this poor man was just literally going into dumpsters and trying to find recyclable items, yeah, to like make money. And he came across the suitcase and he saw like a little skin and like little hair sticking out. So he thought it was a child and he was really upset. So he called 911 and they find out, no, it was Jasmine Fior. And I think it is absolutely disgusting and appalling how her body was treated. Like you are really a psycho to doing that to someone. Like I can't, it is just unbelievable. So when, when they did the autopsy, she had DNA evidence inside of her and it actually was her ex-husband, Michael. Now Michael, um, this is really sad, you guys. I mean, it just gets sadder. Michael really loved Jasmine and Jasmine really loved Michael. And they broke up. We honestly kind of don't know why. The only thing I can think of is because he went to prison. So the day he got out of prison, she drove to San Diego and they had a wonderful time together. And what's insane is that if they just used that DNA, Michael would have been charged with her murder. But his alibi was so airtight because he was wearing like the, the, um, what do you guys call it? You wear them under house arrest. It's kind of like the, the ankle things. Oh my gosh. Why am I blanking out? So it's, ba it's basically when you're a parolee, sometimes they actually put like some kind of electric, uh, um, electronic like anklet, you know, around your ankle, you know, to make sure then, you know, where you are. And he was in prison for drug trafficking. I mean, that could mean a lot. He could, he could, he could have been a kingpin or he just wanted to make some money for him and Jasmine and he got caught. Who knows? But the fact is, is she still loved him. And he loved her like when he found out about her death he was so devastated like to his her mother to his um I believe her name is Lisa yeah to the mother Lisa he was like I just lost the love of my life and I'm like oh my gosh so of course what who are the police gonna look at her husband Ryan now, Ryan was the one who did the missing persons report and they were like, well, how do you describe Jasmine? And this is so eerie, you guys. He said she had the perfect teeth. Yeah. Perfect teeth and blonde um, and long hair. And I, I mean, the main thing that sticks out for me is like she had perfect teeth. I'm like, what? That's it. Yeah, that's very morbid and creepy. So now the police go, you know, and they're like, they're like, okay, well, we need you in for questioning. And he goes, no, I can't. I'm having problem with immigration. Um, I need to go back to Canada and blah, 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 blah. So of course everyone's like, no, we, we need to get him. And they figured out from friends, family, that he actually had a domestic charge against him from Jasmine. And they were like, we, we need to get him. And then they saw all the security footage. In fact, the suitcase that she was found in was in the security footage 
on the bellhop um what do you guys call that it's basically not a lift but it's some kind of contraption where you put the luggage on oh man i am just words are just not here today and um so the suitcase that she was found in her body was actually on the that's a cart thank you on the cart yeah eerie i know and megan megan just could not believe like she could not believe that Ryan could do such a horrible thing because now it's all over the news. They're really trying to find him. It's a huge deal. The case is so high profile and you know, Ryan never got what he deserved. No. Instead, he found a way to get into Canada. I mean, he did not, he went where there wasn't any gates or anything he went through the wilderness out of a speedboat and they actually had police on boats trying to get him but because the weather was so bad and it was horrible conditions he got away so he got into canada and then he rented a room called the thunderbird for like three days and by the time people who worked there were like okay well he didn't check out yet I have to, you know, we got to see what's going on. So when they get there, they're met with like a horrible, horrible sight. And he basically took the coward's way out. Mm-hmm. He hung himself on a coat rack with his own belt. And yes, there was um, some kind of suicide note on the computer, and it was called Last Will and Testament. I have it right here. You don't really know the whole entire letter because it's like a few pages long, but he never had remorse for what he did to Jasmine. He basically was like, I am very sorry for running away from my responsibility. And he, you know, said sorry to his loved ones and family, but didn't say anything about Jasmine. He, in fact, said, you may think I'm a monster, but Jasmine was more of a monster and he just blamed everything on like Jasmine which you know I think that is insane you literally took this young girl's life because you could you could not have her at all and he all he wanted was fame and money and a trophy wife and when he found out that Megan did not choose him on Megan wants to be a millionaire then he rushed as soon as possible and saw another playboy um girl and pretty much a playboy bunny so we work for playboy and he married someone else and i'm not going to argue about love because you really can't explain love you can't explain the feelings i mean it could have just been lust and you know they did agree their birthdays were close together which they were two aquariuses so um, not sure if that's a good combo or not, you know, but I know Aquarius women are amazing. They're like their own creatures, uh, you know, themselves pretty much. They're whimsical, they're fun, they're bubbly, very sociable, very hardworking. Um, and, you know, men Aquarians are like a whole different breed and there are quite a bit of serial killers that are Aquariuses who are male. But still, there's still a lot of great male Aquariuses, I'm not just saying that, but I'm just saying, like, it's just a really, really sad story where everyone had their life, you know, ahead of them, and Megan, from the show, she, you know, um, they pretty much put her in the media, like, big time. I couldn't even believe it. She did lose her career, you know, she didn't really go far because no one wants to be associated with a murderer, you know, and she kind of blamed herself it was really sad she's like maybe I shouldn't have talked to him you know like instead of outside of the show maybe he wouldn't have gotten so jealous and angry or I make him snap or you know he like took everything out on poor Jasmine like she does have guilt about that I did read about that um that's very sad her family her mother is absolutely devastated even now there is a Playboy murder segment on HBO Max if you want to watch that. And yeah, it's a very, very sad story. 
And I just want to say that if you are in a, a situation where you're not comfortable, male, female, they, binary, binaries, binary? I'm sorry, I'm still trying to learn the terms, guys. Remember, I'm old, okay? So please forgive me. I'm still trying to be respectful. If you do not feel safe, there is always, always someone out there who can help. And I wish you nothing but positive energy, positive vibes. And Jasmine, I hope you are resting safe, darling. And I appreciate you being such a wonderful light on, you know, to the world and how wonderful you treated people. And I wanted to do your story to tell people that because looks can be deceiving. And um, yeah, it's tragedy, guys. Now, before I end this, you guys, remember in the beginning I said that I kind of have like a theory even though it's just a theory, I don't think it's 100% possible. But think about this way. Maybe the producers did know about Ryan's background check. Maybe someone did and they didn't say anything because, you know, he was the smooth operator. He was extremely manipulative, extremely well-liked in the beginning. Even the cast member guys thought he was a cool dude. They were shocked. Like... It, it, there was no rhyme or reason but I was thinking you know with everything talking about reality TV like the Tyra Banks show America's Top Model stuff like that producers want ratings and I did get kind of sad when Megan did fall for you know Ryan and they would not let her be with Ryan because of ratings or they didn't see him being really a big part of the show even though she's like well why not I choose him you know so what happens if the producers did know or someone did and they were like you know what let's just have them on the show and let's see what happens let's have these ratings get higher and higher i mean let me know what you guys think down in the comments below we don't know okay this is just a, a theory but producers do want ratings because ratings make money and it was kind of like the death of reality tv after this crime like there are reality TV shows you know but they like stopped for a while and I had no idea why and it was because of this case so yeah let me know down in the comments below if you think maybe the producers just wanted to throw them in the mix and to see what happens I hope not um, but I read in this day and age they have very strict contracts now they have very strict backgrounds if you're on tv so that's good but back then were they just too greedy i mean they did do flavor flav and they did do rock of love and those little spin-off reality shows and they made money people you know and with the writer strike they made more money all right but don't come after me i, I was just saying i mean let me know what you guys think Thank you so much for listening, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you are fascinated by true crime, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. And if there are any story um, suggestions, I'll put the link down below. And if you love my beautiful women empowerment earrings, I'll put the link down below. And yeah, please stay safe. Know that you are loved and cherished. And I cannot wait to see you guys next time. Bye guys. And oh yeah, and remember, you are doing better than you think. Bye.